Today we are reviewing POV characters in the A Song of Ice and Fire book series by George R.R. R. Martin, so that is any character that has a point of view chapter, which there are a lot of it turns out. I was originally going to rank every single character that has a POV chapter, however guys there are a lot of them, so instead I'm going to do my top 15. Time is precious, your time is precious, I don't want to bore you by going through every single character because did you know how many there are? It's a lot. So instead I'm going to do my top 15 best point of view characters in A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin. Now if you do want to hear me talk about some of the other characters that I haven't listed in this video, such as some of the ones who do like an epilogue or a prologue and only have one chapter, then please let me know because I would love to do a part two and talk about the characters that I don't mention in this video. But for the sake of saving your time, we'll just do 15 today. And after I've ranked my top 15, I'll also give some honourable mentions because there's a few that didn't quite make the ranking list, but I definitely definitely want to talk about them because their chapters are great. So let's get cracking, I really hope you enjoy this video, if you do give me a thumbs up and let me know. Just a couple of little disclaimers before we get started, this is in regards to the book series. So I have not actually watched the whole Game of Thrones TV show. At the time of filming this I've watched two episodes from season one, obviously. So I would love to do another video ranking my favourite TV show characters once I've watched the whole thing. It wouldn't make sense for me to do that right now. If you want to see my review and my first impressions of the first episode of Game of Thrones, then I will link that in the description box or you'll be able to find it on my channel. Spoiler alert, it was a great episode, I really loved it and I'm so excited to watch the rest of the series. But for the purpose of today's video, we're just looking at the book point of view characters. So on that note, there will be spoilers from any of the A Song of Ice and Fire books. So if you have not finished the whole series, this is your warning that I will probably spoil stuff and I'm sorry in advance. Proceed with caution. So this list, it's not a list of like my favourite characters, it's more of a list of the ones whose point of view chapters I feel like are the best. So it might be the case of their perspectives are really well written or the way that we see into their mind was really in depth. So because of that reason I would absolutely love for you to leave your ranking list as well. You don't have to do your top 15 if you don't want to. Alternatively if you want to then please feel free. Leave me in the comments a couple of your favourite point of view characters and we can see if we've got some similar or different opinions that would be cool too. So without further ado let's get started. I have a feeling this list is probably going to change once I reread the books. So in at number 15 to kickstart our list of favourite POV characters we have the one the only Barristan Selmy. He has about six chapters I think, please let me know if I'm wrong, but off the top of my head I think he has six chapters in the whole series. Generally I think he's a really honourable guy and reading from his perspective you get that, that honourability, that loyalty from him and I like that. Now there are a small faction of the community who don't think that he is all that honourable, so for example he was loyal to King Eris Targaryen and then when Robert Baratheon kind of you know usurped him Barristan Selmy then decided to be loyal to Robert, so it's like why are you being loyal to the king who usurped your king? You get me? Like something just doesn't add up in this puzzle piece of Barristan Selmy's loyalty, you know? But overall I do think he is a very loyal member of the Kingsguard and he does seem like a very honourable character, especially when he is pledging his loyalty to Daenerys. That is the particular part of the book and his chapters that I like the most and that is why he's in at number 15 and why he's made the list. He seems like a great guy, I think. Yeah, I'm confident in that statement. In at number 14 we have Bran. 14 does feel a little bit low on the list I suppose for Bran, like maybe this is quite a controversial opinion. He has a lot of chapters in this series, however... He is boring AF. Like, I really like him, don't get me wrong, I like his character. He also has a really juicy storyline right at the start of the series. But then after that point, he just gets boring and his plots are slow and he doesn't really do a whole lot. He doesn't really have any like defining part of his personality. If it wasn't for the fact that he has lost the use of his legs, he would be forgettable because there's no other part really about his personality that sticks out for me, you know? 
But it is quite interesting to see him, you know, trying to be a warg. I think he's quite good at like seeing perspectives through different animals' eyes and I really like those parts of the chapters. I think that that's really interesting and that kind of like use of magic, I suppose. It's really interesting to see him learning that over time. He's just a little bit boring. In at number 13, we have Catelyn. Now, this is a woman I dislike. Okay, I'm sorry. Come for me if you need to, it's fine. I don't like Catelyn all that much. Don't get me wrong, it's really inspiring how much she loves her sons. Okay, that's really admirable. It's really heartwarming to see how much she values and appreciates her children. However, I am not here for the way that she treats Jon Snow, okay? That is uncalled for. Jon Snow is one of my favorite characters, so I am biased. Anybody who treats him badly, for no reason. I ain't gonna like ya. I suppose in Kat's eyes she has a reason. You know, Jon Snow is proof of her husband's infidelity. Fair enough, you're not gonna like the kid that much, are you? But Jon Snow himself has done nothing wrong. And for that reason, I just think Kat's behaviour towards him is completely unjustified and her perspectives towards him are not very nice. She's just not that great at the political side of things, but she does try, but I think it does cause some, some errors. Although she was very smart when she was having a massive go at Rob for his choice in wife that led to the inevitable red wedding. That's really hard to say, red, red wedding. I do have to say that the red wedding, why can I not say that phrase? <laughs> The Red Wedding chapter is one of the most well-written chapters that I have ever read in my entire life. It is a brilliantly written chapter and it is written through Kat's point of view. And you just, you really feel her pain and that is why the chapter is brilliant. So for that reason, she's made the list. She, to be fair, up until that point, she would have gone below Barrist and Selmy because I just don't like her and I just didn't really like any of her chapters other than The Red Wedding. Number 12, we have Cersei. I think the reason why Cersei is on my list as to being one of the best point of view characters, or albeit she is 12, she's always at an interesting point of action. In terms of her plots, she's always in the middle of some juicy stuff going on and because of that, there's just always interesting stuff in her plots. Like her storylines are just very detailed, very action-packed. Her perspectives are also very interesting. She is quite clearly warped in the mind. This is not a sane person. But the fact that you can literally read her perspectives and just see how psychologically damaged she is, it's almost like you're in disbelief every time you're reading her chapters. And I love that. That's such a that's such a cool way to write someone's point of view chapters. She is so messed up. It's unbelievable. I found her chapter where she was doing like the walk of shame very impressive because she really took that in her stride. You know, people were throwing things at her. She you know, she wasn't wearing anything. She was in a very vulnerable state. And her perspectives are actually very inspiring in terms of how she handled that. So for that reason, I really like that chapter. She's quite far down on my list because she's just a bit repetitive. But I do think that George R. R. Martin displays a lot of his talent when he writes Cersei's chapters. And then on a similar wavelength, in at number 11, we have Jamie. Little bit controversial that he didn't even make my top 10 because a lot of people love Jamie. They love Jamie Lannister. People go on and on and on about it. You know, he's got a big redemption arc, especially in Feast for Crows. He starts off being a very unlikable character, and I suppose towards the end of the series, he does turn things around, and when you learn more about his perspectives and his insights, people start to have a bit more compassion for him, and people start to like Jamie. I am not one of those people. I still don't like him. Yes, I read his redemption arc, and I still don't like Jamie Lannister. You heard it here first, kids. He does have a lot of character development though. Like I would say he's probably one of the characters who has the most amount of development in terms of their personality, their values, their motives. He's just been constantly manipulated by his twin sister the whole time that he's been alive for. But I just don't think I like him as much as everybody else does. Maybe that will change when I reread. Okay, give me the benefit of the doubt. There is some hope that I might end up liking Jamie Lannister a little bit more when I read Feast again. But 
as it stands right now, he's 11th. Now, somebody who did make my top 10 in at 10th place, we have the amazing Samuel Tarly. I think I like this character's point of view because, again, this is where George R. R. Martin displays his talent. When you view a very cowardly character and you see the world through that character's eyes and how he doesn't have a whole lot of bravery, he is very self-critical. The way that he views the world and the way that he views himself, when all of that is put into a point of view chapter, it just makes you feel things, you know? Like when I was reading Sam's chapters, I really felt deep emotions. I particularly like his part of the plot where he is travelling on the boat with Maester Eamon Targaryen and Gilly. And then he works out in that moment how John has switched the babies over. So obviously Gilly is just crying all the time. She's with her babe. She's completely miserable. And how he kind of figures out that John has switched the babies, I just thought that was so well paced. And it was, it was just a great journey to see how he got from noticing that something was up to noticing what was up and discovering what it was that was making Gilly so miserable. I just really liked that part of the storyline and yeah, it was like the way that the cogs were turning in his mind and the way that he was figuring things out. I just really, really liked that. So he is in at 10th spot for me. Who do we have next? I forget. In at number nine is Daenerys. Now this is a character that I just think is incredibly badass. Like I really like Daenerys, a lot of people do. Now remember this isn't a list of my favourite characters, this is a list of like ranking the point of view chapters that they have. Because as a character and as like a badass character, I love Daenerys. I think that there's lots of parts of her personality I would like to take forward in my own and things that you can learn from her. But she is at number ninth spot for me because her storyline gets so dull and so boring frequently throughout A Song of Ice and Fire. And she just feels so far removed from everything else that's happening over in Westeros. Sometimes you read Daenerys chapter and it feels like nothing happened. And you sit there afterwards and you just think, what was the point in that? I just feel like her problem is that nothing really happens, or like a lot of stuff happens, but it's so spread out across the course of the book series that it's very slow. Like her, her plots progress very, very slowly, whereas in comparison to some of the other characters, theirs are very jam-packed. And I particularly liked her storylines in Dance of Dragons. That was probably my favorite. Um, and the original first book, Game of Thrones, her storyline in that book again is amazing, so interesting. I just feel like the books in the middle of the series, she was just dull AF. In at eighth, we have another amazing, admirable woman in Game of Thrones. Well, A Song of Ice and Fire. And this is Brienne of Tarth. Her chapters in Feast for Crows were actually some of my favourites. Now, Feast for Crows is probably my least favourite book in the series because I found it quite boring for the majority of it, but Brienne really brought it back. She was like the saving grace for that book. She adds to our understanding of the world, the plot, and again, her perspectives are so incredible to see, like to see the world through her eyes. Like it's another very honorable character. She, she is the epitome of a true knight in a woman's body. And she just tries her hardest for anybody that she is serving. She's a lot of fan favorites and I can definitely see why she is great. Let's move on to number seven and that is Sansa. So far, I like Sansa a lot more in the books than I do in the TV show. I'm not gonna lie, she's actually really annoying me in the TV show at the moment. I have only watched two episodes, so uh, you know, I'll give her a chance. But in the second episode, she just really annoyed me. However, I think in the books, you can see more insight into her reasons for doing things. Whereas in the TV show, you don't get that because you're just seeing what she does. But when you're reading what she does in the books, you're reading why she is doing it. And I think that that's where the difference is. And that's why I have a bit more compassion and a bit more of a likening to Sansa. You also start to see a noticeable shift when she realizes throughout the course of the series that life is not all positive. There's a lot of horror. There's a lot of torture. There's a lot of cruelty in the world. And the moment that you start to see her hope 
shifting and diminishing. It's a really sad process to see, but I just really like the pacing that you notice that happening. I also think that her chapters when she writes as Elaine are very, very good up in the eerie. In fact, that whole storyline, that whole plot is so juicy. So much stuff goes on there. It is actually crazy to think about. And it's written through Sansa's point of view as Elaine. And I really like that. That is a true testament to Martin's writing. And I just like that she starts off being this like girl who believes in fairy tales and that her Prince Charming will come. But then by the time you get to the last book, she is not like that at all. Her perspective has completely changed and she's actually starting to adapt with the cruel world that she is living in. In at number six place, who's it gonna be? We have Theon Greyjoy. And the reason why he is sixth is purely because of Reek. He is saved by the Reek chapters. I found those so interesting. I didn't care for him at all before that point. I didn't like him. I still don't really like him as a character. He was probably one of my most disliked characters prior to the point where he becomes Reek. But his character really ramped up for me when he starts to write from Reek's perspective because you can tell that he has been tortured to the point of a psychological breakdown and the way that George R. R. Martin writes this dude's thoughts it's just mind blowing. It is so skilled and those chapters left me in awe. Cause you're reading from the viewpoint of somebody who has lost their mind. And it's just incredible. I also quite like how, although I didn't like him at this point, in the earlier part of the series, you see his, his struggles with identifying as an ironborn. Like I'm so sure that there is a part where he tries to go back to his dad and his dad just wants nothing to do with him. And it's like the whole way that he is treated when he is an ironborn through and through. The whole way that he's been treated just because he kind of grew up in Ned Stark's care, Winterfell. It's, it's like he's been rejected by his family and or his house even. That is a particular part of the series that I'm so excited to reread because I just think that it's such an interesting way of looking at things and it's about like a struggle with his identity in a way. So now you'll be pleased to know we're into the top five and I do think that some of these are a little bit controversial, maybe. In at number five we have Davos Seaworth, our lovely little onion knight. I love this guy, I couldn't even tell you why, I just really liked him. Every time I saw that the next chapter was written from his point of view I had a smile on my face because I couldn't wait to read it. I think, even though his storylines aren't the juiciest, let's be honest, he does seem to always be at a point of action, but he, you know, he's kind of like a side character to it. I just think I love the way that he describes stuff and the way that he views the world. I just think I love it. And it was quite refreshing to read a chapter by Davos Seaworth every time. He's quite, again, he's quite a loyal guy. He just seems like a nice dude. Don't really have much else to say about him. Do I have anything else I want to say about Davos? Davos? Potato, potato? In at number four, we have the Holy Grail, Ned Stark. Again, just another great guy. And actually, if he had more chapters, he would be further up this list. The reason why he's in at number four, which is too low down, to be honest, for me, is just because he dies too early. And you know, that's not his fault. Not his fault he died, you know, he couldn't help it. But I think it's the fact that I just wanted to hear more from him. I just wanted more chapters from him. And if he had more, he'd be higher up this list. But fourth is still very decent. His chapters are very vital to a lot of major storylines. His chapters progress the plots a lot. His death also sparks a massive aftermath, like it triggers a lot of other plots to happen. Yeah, he, he gives us a lot of detail of the historic lore as well, which I like. I feel like you learn a lot about the history prior to where Game of Thrones starts because of Ned Stark and I really like that because I love learning about the historic lore. It makes the world feel more real to me. It makes the universe that George R. R. Martin has created feel more real. And I like that. And that's why I enjoyed reading Fire and Blood, for example. And I just feel like you learn a lot about the history through Ned Stark's point of view chapters, which is another reason why he's really high up on my list. Again, he's just a very decent guy. He is pretty honorable. He's like the classic hero guy. I think every time he makes a decision or an action, he's doing it for the right reasons. So for that, he's actually one of my favorite characters. 
he just wasn't around for long enough, unfortunately. In at number three, we're into the top three, guys. How did we get here already? We've got Jon Snow. Again, I just love this guy's personality. You can't fault it, really. His plots are not the juiciest. They're not the most action-packed, but his perspectives and the way he views the world make up for it massively. I mean, it is possibly controversial to have him so high up, but it's not controversial to me because it's my opinion, so I agree with it. I love the way that he thinks and feels. I love the way that he thinks about other people, about things that are happening to him, about, about the way that he thinks about himself as well. I feel like he, again, is always trying to do the right thing, just like his father, but like barriers keep getting thrown in his way, things outside of his control that he can't help are thrown at him constantly. So he's always, he's always trying to do the right thing, but external factors are just not allowing it. And he, he has quite a difficult life. So he takes it in his stride and I feel like he tries to manage it in the best way that he can. And I just like his perspectives a lot. And again, he's quite, um, he's just a likable character. We have my second place spot. And this is again, another one of my favorite characters. This is Arya. Another absolute badass and her character development is top to the notch. The only thing that I would say about her is that I just again feel like we didn't get enough chapters for her. She does have a lot, She's, she does have a lot of chapters. I just wanted more. Give me more. She's strong, she's feisty, she has some really witty remarks to things that people say. She's the complete opposite to her sister. She doesn't believe in fairy tales. She wants to be a badass. She wants to be out there you know, playing with her swords. She wants to be having adventures and she's just a great character. And I thought her plots were incredible. I just felt like George R. R. Martin spaced them out too much. Like there were some times where you were waiting like 250 pages between Arya chapters and I just wanted more. So for that reason, she's number two because she was one of my favorite characters to read from and I was just so disappointed that I felt like we didn't get enough of her or not as often as I would have liked to. So we are down to number one, first place. Who's it gonna be? Now I'm gonna keep you guessing for a little bit longer because I love the suspense. I'm gonna share some honorable mentions. These are people who didn't make my top 15, but I felt like I wanted to discuss them anyway because they just deserve the little mention. They deserve the shout out. One POV character that I really enjoyed, they had one chapter and it was an epilogue, so I can't put them in my top 15 because it's one chapter, but that is the one by Kevin Lannister. What a chapter, and that is the final chapter of Dance with Dragons. It was so good, it was shocking at the end, it ended on a cliffhanger. Sadly, we will get no more chapters by Kevin Lannister. In terms of his point of view, it was pretty generic, you know, pretty standard. But I think the reason why I wanted to mention him was because of what happened in his chapter. Another honourable mention I wanted to give is actually Quentin Martel. He's just quite funny. I just think he's funny at the fact that he actually thinks he's gonna marry Daenerys, you know? He's like so intent on the fact that it's a given, he's gonna marry her. No problem at all, there are no flaws to his plan. And then he gets burnt by a dragon. It was just funny. I mean, it obviously wasn't funny for him. He did meet his demise quite painfully but it was really funny for me. Another point of view chapter that I wanted to mention, now this person only has one chapter again, that is Melisandre. I can't really say too much about her because again, we have one POV chapter by this character, but my golly was it interesting. And I think her upcoming chapters that are rumored to be in Winds of Winter will be so important. I'm really looking forward to those. So if George R. R. Martin could you know, hurry up a little bit, a lot, and get that book released so that I can read more of Melisandre's chapters, that would be fan dabby -dozy. thanks. Because obviously he will be watching this video and he will speed up and release it because I've asked him to. And then the final POV character that I wanted to give a shout out to, because again, I really liked reading from this person's perspectives. Not enough to put them in my top 15, but to be honest, this person would have been 16th if I, if I was gonna carry on the list. Like I was very tempted to put them in my top 15 and this is Asha Greyjoy. Again, she doesn't have too many chapters so she doesn't have the opportunity to be higher on my list. 
But she's just another feisty gal and I quite like how fierce she is and how determined she is as well. Like when she's at the King's Moot and she really thinks that she could actually have a chance of winning it. Is that delusional or is it determined? You tell me. I can appreciate her badassness. There's also um, a plot where she is down in, where is she? Deepwood Mott, while Stannis Baratheon is attacking her and obviously she is defeated, she doesn't win. But I just quite like the way that she tries to control her little army or like her guards or whoever's with her. The way that she tries to instruct them and try to organise that fight. I just quite liked it. I feel like a lot of people like her actually. I feel like she's quite respected or a lot of people think she's one of the strongest female characters. So the moment you have all been waiting for or skipped the video to go to, who is in my number one spot, the best POV character? in A Song of Ice and Fire throughout the whole series. You've probably already guessed it, there's a very vital character that I've not spoken about yet in this video. Another one of my favourites, love this person's personality. I love the way that they view the world. They are witty, they are funny. It is the one, the only, the god tier, Tyrion Lannister. Round of applause to Tyrion, he has done it again. He is fantastic to read from. And actually, he might also end up being one of my favourite characters in the TV show. Again, I've only watched two episodes. But he's so funny. He's such a good character. He just has all these witty remarks and he's just sarcastic. He's funny. He's a very unserious. He makes jokes all the time. He's also involved in a lot of drama. He has a little bit of a mental breakdown when he kills his dad and then he kills Shay and then he just goes on a weird rampage. His chapters are not just funny, there's also some serious, deeper underlying themes in his chapters. The way that he views himself or the way that he knows the world see him because of his dwarfism. He's very like switched on, like he he's not an idiot basically, he's not a fool. His perspectives are really logical and I can appreciate that. So it's not just the fact that he's funny and he's just such a unique character, it's also the fact that he's very like not stupid. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of the other characters, Cough, Cersei, Cough, are quite stupid. I'm not one to talk about stupidity, let's be honest, but if I was going to talk about it I would say that Tyrion is not. So there you go, ladies, gentlemen, anything in between, that is my top 15 and some honourable mentions of the point of view characters in A Song of Ice and Fire. As I mentioned, there are many more. If you want to hear me talk about more of them, if you care, then please leave me a comment and let me know. I would also like to do another version of this video when I have finished the whole TV show because I would like to just talk about my favourite characters in the TV show because they might be different to my POV characters in the books. So what did you think? Do you agree with some of my ranking? Do you disagree? I'd love to hear your opinion. I would also love to hear your ranking. Like who would you, who would you rate? Who would you rate as your top POV character? If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know that you did and thank you for sticking around, I really appreciate it. If you like my content and you want to see more from me, then please subscribe because it's free and it means that you'll see my videos a lot easier. As I mentioned, if you do want to watch my review for the first episode of Game of Thrones, I'll pop that in the description box for you or you can find it on my channel as well. I will see you next time, or rather you'll see me, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye for now.